Hello, this is Larisha Speaks, and I wanted to do this video in regards to The Last Resort. The last video I did in regards to Wendy Williams, we were talking about the family's last resort and how people are criticizing them for making a tough but very important decision. It's literally like they they dealt with the cards that they were given. They played with the cards that were given. They made a hard decision. They made the best decision for them and their family. But a lot of people are judging them, saying, why did they do this? You know, giving all excuses or reasons why they had to act in such a haste way. But drastic times calls for drastic measures. So when thinking about what Wendy Williams family has done, I wanted to let people know where I am and why I am to the extreme with my case. Now, I don't think I'm to the extreme. I think I'm the kind of person where every action is subject to a greater or equal reaction. And I responded the way I felt as though I needed to respond for what was being done to me. And I was not, I was not going to put myself in a position where I do nothing. Because that's what people who ahead of me who were brought up on the false department of the charges or harassed at the line of work did. Now, a lot of them, some of them didn't just do anything. They did something, but whatever they did, they was, the system was still working. The judiciary was still working allegedly to cover up all that was being done in the courts. So people was holding them accountable. My friend, the sheriff's officer, he filed a lawsuit against them. Things were being done to hold people accountable for their actions and inactions, but they were still like, we don't care and continuing to treat people the way they decided to treat people. That let me know, again, the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. So that let me know when they came to me, what they was going to do. So then I needed to act accordingly. I can't do what everybody else was doing because that's what everybody else did. and they. They intimidate you, they put you in this corner, and they they silence you, they get you broke. Those are the things that they do, how they come after you. So since I knew what that was, I acted accordingly. Now, some of the things, when I say it was the last resort and how it was very, I don't want to say it was dramatic for me. I don't think it was dramatic. People tell me I'm a dramatic person, but that's what I It was just, the if you move, I move just like that. And you can't get mad at somebody or try to police their response to your abuse. And I feel like a lot of times the abuser wants to tell you, oh, you can't do this to me or you can't or you have to hold yourself accountable while they are not holding themselves accountable. And that in lies the problem. You are not going to tell me that I have to follow the procedures and the laws while you are against me not following the procedures and the laws. Nah, homeboy, you are telling me how I need to act and what I need to do by me seeing how you act. I see that you don't care about the laws and the policies or procedures. That let me know I don't need to care about them either. So the, the policy or the procedure with the quote unquote confidentiality, the New Jersey judiciary does not care about it. They want you to be confidential, to, to silence you, to shut you up so you can't talk about what they did. Since I knew that's what it was, I have no respect for that law. I am not keeping any crimes against me or my family confidential. I don't care how many times you tell me that. I don't care how often you spell it. I don't care if you write, uh, take a picture of it. It don't matter. If you commit a crime against me, I have every right to speak and broadcast and write a book about the crime you committed against me. Now, if you have a problem with that, you shouldn't have committed the crime. But as far as I'm concerned, anything done to me is free game and it's content. You cannot tell me that you've done something to me and I can't do anything about it. But some of the things that I did initially start working there because I want to let people know how bad it's gotten. I was there for nine years. So it's not like, oh, was all the nine years bad? Yes. All the nine years was bad. Yes. This place was a living H-E double hockey sticks. The one of the worst place. And I've worked at several different places. I've had several different jobs from McDonald's to LaCarte Ford on 22 in New Jersey to Quad Care Insurance. I've worked at several different places in regards to the the normal work environment. Very the worst place ever in my life. Worst place. I understand how people would retire and then pass. It, it's the worst place. It's the worst. I understand why people kind of work. The worst place, the worst possible people ever. You think about all the people and you know how you know how there's a stereotypical when people say state employee are incompetent and they're nosy and they didn't do their job. These every stereotype of every negative connotation or every negative stereotype of a, a state employee at this place. 
and the problem with me was the fact that I was holding them accountable to the same expectation that they were trying to hold me accountable to. That's where the problem in line. First, when I got here, I saw the problem immediately. I would just ask other people like, do y'all know that these people are breaking the law against them? Because the stuff that they were doing, the number one thing was they were hypocrites. We will have code of conduct training. A code of conduct training we will have every year if you're an judicial, judicial employee. And in this training, it'll tell you the nine canons of laws and things you cannot do. Creating an appearance of impropriety, conflict. You can't take a gift from a, uh, def- a client of the court or defend it. It's certain things as an employee of the court that you have to be, you have to be held to the highest of standard because you're a court employee. This was done every year like clockwork everybody had this training and what shocked me is the fact that the management the managers there did not follow none of the code of conduct number one you had to be professional at all times they were that's why they got sued you gotta uh follow rules and regulations they didn't that's why they got sued so every this in this training where they tell you what to do what not to do the people who were during the trainings were the managers who are actually sued in my lawsuit. They were not leading by example. And that's why I had a problem with it because you can't sit there and say like they were doing stuff that they shouldn't have been doing. And they're telling you that they can't do it to you. Like we can't discriminate against you. Here's the training, code of conduct. Okay. So as a black person, you cannot be treated less than because you're black. Why they are literally treating you less than because you're black. Baby, when I tell you, I'm looking at them like, and I used to always raise my hand at the trainings, and they used to be like, Larisha, you crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm just asking. Do the managers know? Do the ones giving this training know that these rules apply to them? I will always ask that question. And I will ask questions like, do y'all know y'all got to follow these rules too? And they will always ask me, why you always ask that? Because I don't think they know. Because they was not following those rules. And it was kind of, it was an issue for me seeing people do whatever they wanted to do when they were telling you that they couldn't do that. So you're telling me that these are the rules and the regulations that you cannot do while you're doing it to me. Like you double dog daring me to say something about it. And I was the one to say something about it because y'all got to be out your mind. Like you're telling me what you can't do to me while you're doing it to me, but I'm not supposed to say nothing about it because if I do, you're going to come after me. That's basically what it boiled down to. Um, I didn't care. I was going to hold you accountable just like you was, quote unquote, Tim, you holding me accountable and writing me up on false departments and charges for things that I'm not even guilty of, that I'm not even, you know, fraud charges, but I can't hold you accountable for two charges, the the hypocrisy of it all. So how I started was was literally just having conversations. Like, do y'all know that they are not following the rules and regulations and they're this, the, what they're doing is, you know, I, everyone there who's a probation officer, you either have to have a degree. So you have to have a criminal justice degree, psychology degree, social work degree. You have to have some type of degree in the so, uh, humanities field. And number two, or you have to have years of experience. You had to be a probation officer for a period. You had to be an investigator and move up and get promoted like a, a, a judicial clerk for this amount of time. But you got this many credits. You you know, you had to have a certain level of education with a certain level of training. And remember, every in judicial employee, whether you are um, I don't know about the janitors, but the judicial clerk to the investigators, so you had to have this training. Judges have supposedly code of conduct that they have to follow. So the fact that these people were not following basic code of conduct was an issue for me. So having a conversation, do y'all know that these people are breaking the law? And it was a common knowledge that, yes, we are aware that the managers, the criminal division manager, assistant criminal division manager, some of these supervisors, management do not they don't care about the code of conduct they have the complexion for the protection and they can do what they want to do and you just got to shut up and take it i had an issue with that so first just having a basic conversation with my coworkers, seeing that you know the way they'll be treated and the white ones wasn't treated the way i was treated and the fact that i was treated that way they looked at me like well we know that y'all get treated that way because i was other so no, that was not okay. Went to the union. The union is the Probation Association of New Jersey. Went to the union about the treatment and the, the union rep, the shop steward that I had in my office. <sighs> Como D say, how do you say, I don't want to say irrelevant. I can't think of a word to describe somebody who's just, who they see the problem, they see the issue, but they're not 
I don't I don't know how to say it. when I think of the word to describe it. Um, but that person literally told me because they have to represent everybody who's being brought up on charges. And that person literally said that they only represent black people. Why is it I'm only representing black people and she doesn't represent any other race? And as a union, why are you guys not filing grievances? Because you see the in um, the differential treatment. You see it firsthand. You see the only black people being brought up on charges and not white people. So you're saying white people don't do nothing. Anymore. And you're aware of what the white people are doing because you also work with them. So these are people who are very aware of what's going on, who are very aware of the differential treatment, but they're not doing nothing. I was literally told by the president at the time that the division manager is going to leave. I should just be quiet, take it. She's going to be out of here soon, and then you should be fine. I'm like, what? So I'm supposed to sit here and take this illegal activity because this person who's been doing this, who's been there for 20, 30 years, again, if they treat the black employees like this, I am so sorry. If anybody had a case in Middlesex and who was sent to probation or prison, if you're in Middlesex County, New Jersey, I am so sorry and I apologize because I can only imagine the H-E-W hockey sticks you've gone through compared to what the workers have gone through. Because you already got it against you that you're you are you have charges against you. Then I'm pretty sure with the public defender, they got sued. They they're not fighting for you. And then how corrupt the prosecutor, allegedly how corrupt the prosecutors are, they are dirtying your cases up, violating your rights. So I really do feel sorry. And my really fight is for the people. Because if they are doing this to people who are employed there, the the public don't stand a chance. So talking to regular people, going to the union. After going to the union, I could also go to the EEO. The EEO director was a black man. I went to him several times. He was well, as a black man in America, he was well aware of the differential treatment and the behavior and the white women who were in a position of power in the criminal division. But his position was one of those positions where he had the title, but he didn't have any power. He was a black man in America. If you want a black man in America to stand up to these white women and try to hold them accountable for being their Karens, you're putting his livelihood on the line. I understand that. I understand that. So it was so much power he had. And the, the power that he did have, he took the opportunity to tarnish my name to other probation officers. I guess he don't know I know about it, but tell them that I'm not a credible witness, even though he know that the the that the, the the credibility of my claims was proven and then some. So he's well aware of that, but he took the opportunity to continue the white supremacy code and tarnish my name and come after me because I was holding them accountable. Because what I noticed about white supremacy and how it works is the only thing they try to do is to discredit me. So if they come at me with false departmental charges, even though I'm holding accountable, now I'm not, I'm not a credible witness because I have these charges over me and that's what is supposed to stop me, I guess. And I don't know about, I don't, maybe I'm not, not wrapped too tight. If I know that you have false charges against me, and if you told people to lie on me, that proves my case and is more passion for me to tell my story, which I don't understand why they thought that that would silence me. But every time I had a complaint, they would come with the false charges. And the false charges was, look, we got people testifying against you. But I guess they didn't. I, I, that's why I say you're not dealing with the, the brightest apples in the box because I know that it's fraud. Like, I don't care if you if you have everybody in the criminal division right now, give a statement and testify against me. I would not care because at the end of the day, the truth is the truth. And they are assuming because they have this number and that's how it works. That's what scares the people. You just can turn these people and make these people change their statements even if it's not true. So that silenced the person and that's their tactic and how they go after people and how they shut it. That don't work for me. I'm not wrapped too tight. I don't care who you get. The truth is the truth because we can start taking lie detector tests. If you want to get all those people, I'll pay for it because at the end of the day, it don't matter if you got somebody lying on me, that don't put legitimacy to your claim. You act like I don't know that they lying. But again, that was done to silence me and shut me up. So after going to him, now I did not want to, and I'm going to say this wholeheartedly, I didn't, I did not want to file a complaint, an official complaint with the EEO. I went to the EEO guy several times and I thought if I was go to him, that they would be like, okay, she going to them, let's leave her alone. No, these Karens was like, oh, she going to him? Are we really going to get her? So 
they kept coming at me with the BS. So at the end of the day, I, I feel as though they were forcing me to hold them accountable because they didn't stop abusing me. They were continually to abuse me, to violate my constitutional right and treat me like I was a second class citizen. And they double dog dare me to say anything about it. So after talking to other people, trying to see where everybody is, does everybody know this is going on? I even wrote an anonymous letter to the child court administrator. After talking to the union, trying to meet with the union, explaining to the union, this is what's happening. This is what they're doing. Why are they coming after me? After going to the EEO director saying, look, you know how Karen's are like, look at this, what's going on. His only option, to file a complaint. Point push came to shove. I finally filed the, filed the complaint. When I filed a complaint with the six months later, I was brought up on false departmental charges. In addition to that complaint, I filed a federal EEO complaint. My federal EEO complaint that I filed in 2014, I had a right to sue letter. In, the, in federal court, if you're suing for discrimination at the federal level, you have to get a, a right to sue letter from the federal EEO. I have one in 2014 based on the corruption. I allegedly based on their corruption and what they did, I got a right to sue letter. Went to work, continued, wrote letters, everything they did, I documented everything, wrote statements. That's the thing that saved me now with my case because at the end of the day, my criminal justice teacher told me this. When it comes to evidence, you I can accuse them of, I can accuse them of crimes, I can accuse them of being crooks, I can accuse them of whatever I want to accuse them of. But baby, when it's time to go to court, you better have your eyes dotted and your T's crossed and you better have the paperwork. Because if you're accusing people of corruption and calling them names the way I'm calling them, I don't know if you know this, baby. I wrote a book. I did a documentary. I'm calling them names. If I do not have the evidence to support anything that I'm saying, I am SOL. It's going to be big trouble. Big. You know how much trouble you would be in? Maybe this is a whole entire branch of government. An entire branch. It's not just a little department, an entire branch of government. I'm willing to stand on the evidence that I have. With, and we're in court right now, and we're at the discovery stage where we have to give over evidence. So I had to give them all of my evidence, and they have to give me, they are refusing to give me evidence. And that is the stage we are at right now. They are refusing to give over. And I, again, I know my case is airtight. I'm willing to stand on a big boss. I, what do you call it? Gambling Russian roulette? Baby, always bet on black. Trust and believe I have every evidence to, to with every claim that I'm saying. And if I didn't, I would be in trouble. Not just trouble for the the YouTube world, but I will be in illegally, I will be in trouble. Okay. I don't know if you know trouble, but if you think that they're not gonna try to come after me for making these salacious accusations and scant, what you think they wouldn't come after my little black? You saw how they fired me and I locked my nephew up. You think they would come after me? Oh, they would come after me. So trust and believe everything I'm saying, I got more than enough evidence for it. But that's the stage we are now. We have to give over that evidence to prove our case. And they have to give over the evidence to prove our case. And they are refusing to do that. I wonder why. I wonder why they're refusing to give the evidence over. So in regards to my last resort, <laughs> Before I filed a lawsuit against an entire branch of government, which I still don't believe, um, going filing the EEO complaints. And then after I saw the illegal activity and how the criminal division manager, assistant criminal division manager was allowed to resign instead of being brought up on charges. And then the New Jersey judiciary saying my claim had no merit, even though they have a case where this person was brought up on charges for discriminating against me. And they just threw that evidence away. Me seeing that alleged corruption, I said, mm -mm. I, you know, then you got people lying on me. Like, I don't trust anything that these people, once you show me who you are, I believe you. I'm aware of your illegal activity. I know that you're corrupt. I know you'll do any and everything to shut me up. That is why I sing you like Tony Braxton. That is why I'm on YouTube. That is why I wrote the book. That is why I have the website, because I'm well aware of the corrupt government entity that the alleged corrupt government entity that I'm dealing with, because I already seen the level of your corruption for nine years. It's not it's not new to me. I've been dealing with I worked there from 2012 to 2021. I saw everything you did. You illegally firing me did not shock me at all. You in, illegally incarcerated my nephew. You're refusing to release evidence in his case. You transfer, you you force the public defender to keep his case there. They've done a list of things. So I'm not shocked at anything that they've done. 
the what what the shocking thing is to my perspective is the fact that they didn't think I was gonna say anything about it. That's honestly the shocking thing. And what the reason why I chose to be vocal about the abuse that I suffered at the hands of my employer is because number one, I know if I went through it, other people went through it. Number two, if I'm going through it as a worker, what are the people charged with crimes? How are they treated? Number four, man, you I'm from Brick City. You got me up. If you think I'm going to just sit here and take it. At the end of the day, you only do to me what I allow you to do. And you did all this stuff. It's cool. I'm going to sue you in court. You you run the courts. I'm suing you in court, but you're running the courts. If I'm saying y'all corrupt, because I worked there for nine years and I saw how y'all made stuff, this is, I'm supposed to bet everything on that process? Nah. Malcolm X said, you will be a fool to let your enemy dictate how you address them. That's like the just of what he said. So I would be a fool to let it be addressed just that way. That's how they want it to be addressed. Because guess what? It'll be silent. If they're addressing it, they're just going to silence me. To this day, to my knowledge, there has not been an investigation to any of the allegations that I'm making. Now, the attorney general for the state of New Jersey just handed the case over to a private law firm, they're still, ha- I'm making salacious allegations, I'm making corrupt, I call the FBI, I am, I call the U.S. attorney, I'm making allegations for criminal activity, I am making allegations for RICO charges, and no investigation, and I'm just supposed to be, as a taxpayer, mind you, I got to pay my taxes by the 15th, or they're going to throw me under the jail, and no investigation, and I'm just supposed to sit here and take it? So no, as a last resort, my book, my documentaries was refusing to, me refusing to be silent. Me seeing how other cases were handled. And when you take a settlement, after the settlement, you sign an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement. You agree not to talk about what? I agree not to talk about what you did. What you did, you did it. I'm not okay with that. And I understood that them having the system and them feel, figuring out how to manipulate the system so they can still get away with doing this to people is the issue. So if I have to be the one person in this system to stand up and say, wait a minute, this is what been, my friend was a sheriff officer. He was called the N word. The person who called him the N word to my knowledge is still employed by the New Jersey judiciary. So you still get a pay, paycheck from Middlesex County as a sheriff, as a supervisor for the sheriff for calling a black sheriff officer the N-word, I was fired for having a panic attack at my nephew's hearing. And I'm supposed to be okay with that? I'm not. And I'm going to continue to talk about it until the cows come home. So when people look and people judge, I don't want people to judge people by what they do when they feel like their back is against the wall because I've tried to do everything amicable. I went to the people to talk about it. I went to my union, addressed my union for, I filed my first complaint 23 months after employment. Before I filed that complaint, it's specific things that I did to try to avoid me from filing the complaint. But they continued to have their foot on my neck. As a black person, they wanted to let me know that they were in charge and I had to shut up and take it because I was getting this paycheck every two weeks. And I was in a position was you and that check. And that is the issue. They're not used to people saying, but what about, but what about, I don't care about none of that stuff. You're not going to violate my rights. I don't care who you are. That's what wasn't going to happen. And that's where the issue is. They thought they were going to do whatever to me, but because they give me a check every two weeks and it was, oh, it was a good check. I ain't going to tell I missed my check. That I would sit there and take the abuse. That I would take the second class citizenship. That I would take, and it, it wasn't, it's not enough. It's more important to me to get my story out. And I could be paid to speak about what you did to me. I got a book. I could be paid for my I could be paid for my documentary. If money is if money is the object, everything is not about money. And I guess they the people are not used to that. I stand on principle. And the principle is either I got these inalienable rights as a as a, a human being and a US citizen, or I don't. Because I was written up for using approved FMLA. And that is not okay. I was fired for having a panic attack. 
because the New Jersey judiciary created an appearance of impropriety and then told me I created the appearance by attending my mentally ill nephew who they illegally incarcerated and locked up and forced to sign an illegal plea. And you wonder why I had a, the nerve, the nerve, the nerve. But again, everything I've done to try to eliminate the situation, it was never addressed. And what I noticed about people who are in a position of power, they abuse their power to try to keep you silent. Even my nephew right now with the state of New Jersey, the New Jersey parole, they violated his parole. They refused to give over the evidence. The parole board said, even though they did all this illegal activity, it was okay. Now we took it to this. That was in the court. The court had to decide if even though all this corrupt stuff, if it's okay. And what I notice about corruption, they stand on their corruption no matter what. So the only thing I have the power to do is inform people about the alleged corruption and, and why it, it's corrupt and hold it accountable and bring a light to it. Because everything with these lawsuits, especially mine and my nephews, is public information. So the more eyes I can get, the more public, you know, I was talking to somebody from Houston, to get on my case, I'm hoping to go to California because I won't be silent about it. It was done to me. It was, you know, the 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 documents that I filed is public information. Everything I'm talking about is public information. Right now, you go check the, the status of the civil case. It says we're in the discovery stage. We've been in the discovery stage since November 2021. I asked them questions. November of 2021. It is December. What is it? What month is it? May uh, 2020. They're refusing to answer the I wonder why. They're refusing to answer the questions. It is March. I said May. Yeah, I'm out of it. March 2024. The state of New Jersey, New Jersey Judiciary, administration of the court are refusing to give over evidence and answer questions that I asked them in November of 2021. Como dice, like, why? Just answer the questions. If I'm crazy, if I'm lying, just answer the questions. But we know why they're scared to answer the questions. So I just wanted to break down what the last resort was, why I had to file. Because I tried everything in my power to do what I needed to do amicably. But it was it was like you getting shut down by corruption, getting shut. I filed my federal EEO, got two right to sue letters. One in 2014, I got one in 2018. I got two right to sue letters against the New Jersey judiciary. The New Jersey judiciary said I still, um, they ha I have no merit in anything that's being done. So when you're fighting, you have to fight with everything you have. And that's just what it is. So I'll see you in court. And they didn't think that they illegally suspended me. They didn't think that I would fight. They thought I would just shut up and take it. I'm going to shut up and take it. Because everything you do to me, like you, you violate my right in these motions, we just going to talk about I'm going to do a video. Let me tell you, I got a video to do about the motion where they just violated my rights. And then we just going to document it. Because if they do this to me, I know they're going to do it to somebody else. And if I can help bring attention, so if somebody else is in this situation, they can do similar things. Write your book. Your book is your rights to what happened. Your book is your, your you have a right to free speech. You have a right to tell your story. How dare somebody do something to you and tell you you can't talk about it? What? And you have a right to protest the government. And this is my protest. And you can't tell me how to protest you. I protest you any way I feel. I need, I see fit. And I see fit that in addition to my book and my documentaries, my YouTube, and we'll be talking about my cases and other cases like mine. I also, we're going to do some of my favorite criminal justice shows. Anybody who knows me know I love Criminal Minds, Law and Order, Blue Bloods, and we're going to dissect what makes this, is this really like real, or this, you know, the best, the number one TV show of all times when it comes to law enforcement and things of that nature. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing. Please like, share, subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Thank you. I support you. I'm at, I believe last time I checked, I was at 47. I appreciate each and every one of you. And I try to respect your time and try to get in and get out. I'm at 30 minutes now or 29 minutes. So I'm going to stop and I'll be doing another one like soon. But I just wanted you guys to know the last resort, how I did not want to take it to this extreme where I have two lawsuits against an entire branch of government in federal and state court, but they gave me no other choice. Thank you. Have a nice day.